Okay, welcome back. So this is a problem from the 2022 European Girls. Um, it's it's one of these. <laughs> okay. Uh, wait, what? Huh. Okay. I mean, sure. So I have uh, I have, I have a function from positive integers, positive integers, it's totally multiplicative. So already from condition one, we're just going to completely encode that. Um, this is a statement that um, f is like completely determined by by its values at prime powers. It's like e, that is f p equals so. What are the interesting solutions? So I can see that one is a solution. I'm wondering if like this is actually a V2 thing, where if I have A, B, and A plus B, is there a promise that two of them have the same two-attic evaluation? I think that's true. I think in general, example, letting f of 2 equal whatever constant I want, and f of p equals 1 for all odd primes, p greater than 1, or p greater than 2, sorry, should work. Because then, in other words, fn is equal to two, like c to the v2n. And I feel like there shouldn't be any other solutions. I would be a... It, it would be surprising to me if there were other things that I need to be careful of. Okay, that's fine. So... It's fine if f of 2 is whatever it wants. Um, in general, if I have... If I have other... Because addition and multiplication just don't work very well together. Like, for example, if I look at f2, f3, and f... Hang on, is that? I said there were no other... Yeah, there shouldn't be any others. Um, like f2, f3, f5, or like f2, f5, f7. I don't know. Like somehow I want to zero in on the prime 2, because that the prime 2 is, looks like it's doing something different from the other primes. Oh yeah, also yeah, f1 is, yeah. f is determined by its value on prime, so f, f1 is 1. Um, <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, it is a plus b, in fact, and not a times b. Um, ah, okay, I understand. So, we're gonna, yeah, so for example, f of 1 is 1, and f of 2, f of 3 should have two equal, sh like among, there should be two equal things. So if f of 2 is greater than 1, then f of 3 is something, something. Do I like look at 4 or something? 1 plus 3? Here, let, let me. I think I'm holding back too much. I should just like write stink write stuff down and see what sticks. Um, F3 and F4, which is F2 squared. So okay, here. Um, if F of two is equal to F of three, and it's greater than one. So okay, uh, let, 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 let me just. Let me just power through the small cases because I suspect the small cases might. I might need to like set up a few small cases, and then after that, I have enough power to just like strong arm my way th with induction through everything else. So if f two is equal to f three is equal to x greater than one, then contradicts the second bullet. 
Meanwhile, if f of 3 is equal to 1, or let, let's say f of 2 is equal to 1, all right? Then f of then the next statement doesn't do anything. I really would like f of 3 to be... Um, oh, but as long as I keep plugging in powers of 2, it won't help me. Um, okay. Um... If a and b have unequal valuations, so I, I should be looking at like f of 3, f of 6, and f of 9, right? Then f of, th and f of 3 is equal to x greater than 1. And then it's like f of 2, f of 3, f of 6, f of 9 is equal. So this is x squared. Oh no, but that doesn't help me because 6 is also... Wait, that's super annoying. Uh, hang on. Am I missing the solutions? Wait, what? what is wrong with V3 being... Wait, hang on. Now I'm very confused. Why did I say 2 was special? Is 2 actually special? Yeah, v c to the v p. Sorry, I. I don't know why I thought two was special. Uh, as as I'm quickly finding out now. Um, sorry, I, I don't know why two was special. Uh, c to the v p event should work. Okay, sorry. So two two. Mm, okay, sorry. <laughs> rewind, rewind. Uh, uh, I, uh, this is how you know I'm getting old. Uh, sorry, I, I take back everything. Okay, let f of q, let q be the smallest prime for which f of q is greater than one. Okay, never mind. I thought two was special, and I was kept trying to zoom in on two, but there's nothing special about two actually. Um. Okay, then then now now I have a crowbar, right? Um, so if ever, if there's only one prime for which this is true, we're fine. Um, let let's do the following. Actually, suppose there's two primes. P less than Q are the two smallest primes for a contradiction. Are the two smallest primes for which F P is greater than one, F Q is greater than one. And now, now I want to try to blow something apart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at uh, f of p, f of q, and f of q, q minus p, which is in fact not a multiple of. So f of q minus p is made up of a bunch of um, primes that are smaller. Like q minus p is neither a multiple of p nor it, yeah okay so so this guy's just one right uh does is that just okay so we get f of p is equal to f of q and that is probably going to cause issues tm no it won't what cause issues like what if i have c of v2 n plus v3 n is that I guess you're worried that not not all of the same number. Okay, no, I, I don't think it's that complicated. It should just be C to the VPN. Uh, yeah, I, I want it to be the same value of C. Um, but also, I don't think there's... Like, it's also, I, I feel like we should be able to break the problem just from this. Like, I feel like, because I don't think, I said earlier I didn't think I was missing solutions and I was missing solutions, so maybe you shouldn't trust me. Uh, but, like, it feels like just P and Q alone should be enough to break open. Like, this, this doesn't feel like it's plausible, right? 
And what I need to do is I need to rig A and B such that, what do I want? Okay, let's let's rig it such that like there's a V, t like A is zero mod P. In fact, let, let's do this. I want, let's, we're gonna make VP of A equal to one. We're gonna make VP of B equal to, VP of A plus B is equal to zero. Right, so I'm gonna put a one there. And then I'm gonna make it such that VQ of A is equal to, but let's do something like this, right? So this way, it's like, uh, oh, uh, sorry, let, let me let me pump the exponent up a little bit. Two, all right, so something like this. Uh, so as long as I can also ensure that A and B don't have too many random weird primes showing up in between, uh, this, this should be plausible. Maybe there'll just be random crap primes. I, I guess it's very hard to say very much about the primes of uh, p squared. Like, this is p squared plus q, right? I don't really like that. You want to do 2p minus q? Um, Why 2p minus... Like if, of, like, if p and q are greater than 2, this doesn't help you, right? Like, if f of 2 is 1, 2p minus q, q... Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, I see what you're saying, sorry. 2p minus q is good enough because it's not... No. Don't you just get c twice? Yeah, okay, so I want to pump up this... Um, I, I, I just need to make a choice. If I take... P is equal to a squared, and then Q to be, sorry, a, a is equal to, Let, let's actually, hmm. maybe it's easier if I go downwards, right? So what if I, because I, I want a plus b to be the biggest thing, so that my, my numbers are smaller, so I don't have as many random primes bumming around. Okay, uh, sorry, you're, yeah, let's, let's do P to the N, where N at least two. Yeah, I, I like that suggestion. Uh, because Q could be a lot bigger than P, so we don't know for sure, but I think if I take B is like Q times, can we just take Q? That, that might not be big enough. Um, So, I want to make it such that A is not... Oh, this is so annoying. Um, So I can make it such that A is less than Q, but I run a risk that A is like... So if I straight up use the floor, uh, then A will be small enough that F of A is in fact exactly equal to one. The problem is that um, B could pick up additional factors of Q that we don't like. So to mitigate that, uh, it's not the end of the world if A is P plus Q, right? If A, if A is like around the order size of P plus Q, um, it still shouldn't have random... No, it could, oh. Uh. Oh, sorry, okay, yes. The, the point is this, this number is... Um, Smaller than Q. 
Okay, wait, so this just works? Let, let me give this number a name. We'll call it L. Right, okay. So the number, the point of L is that because I didn't pick, uh, so I, I didn't make P too bad. Um, so we picked N to be like, what exactly? Like log P of Q ceiling. Then, oh, that, so every, it just works out exactly. That feels a little lucky. <laughs> L is strictly less than Q, so there's no additional factors of Q in there, and it's okay. Then A is less than Q, so no. And P doesn't divide A, so F of A is 1. Okay, that's, that's good enough. Wow. I feel like we, we got like... All right, I mean, it works, so we'll, we'll take the win, but, uh... It feels like it, like, just worked. <laughs> uh, I, I think we... All right, well, it, whatever works, works. Um... It is a good point that you probably want A plus B to be the prime power, because that way your, your numbers are smaller, but I didn't think it would work out this nicely. Okay, let me... Let me... For those of you watching on YouTube, I'll probably just cut the video here. Um, thanks for tuning in. And yeah, all right. That, that, that just works. It's fine. Hey, all right. <laughs>